welcome to the Isle of Man and the hilltop which was once home to Craig Niche Chin Home Low Station. I'm here in particular because the defences of this radar station are still reasonably intact um, and pretty unique across the UK. Uh, so there were three um, irregular sided, nine or ten sided pillboxes um, sited around the top of this hill. Their purpose was to protect the radar station from capture, from ground attack or landing by parachute troops. So in this video we're going to have a look at what remains of these defences. So we're up here on the roof of a 10-sided pillbox, uh, the roof being cast as a reinforced concrete slab. Uh, we see the first unusual feature is the, uh, is the curved local stone uh, blast wall protecting the entrance of the pillbox. And that's not the only unusual features when we have a look inside. They are certainly appear very unique. Uh, to this to this site. So if we walk around the outside first, uh, we can still see the pillbox looks semi-sunken. Uh, in actual fact, the earth bank has been been piled up um, to provide some extra protection to the lower sides of the wall. If we have a look at the loopholes, so these are uh, quite standard precast concrete loopholes that have been fitted in place. Um, so these are anti-ricochet baffles um, to prevent any ricochets that may hit here at an obtuse angle from getting inside um, to the defenders inside the pillbox. Uh, another interesting feature, which is um, why I'm almost sort of questioning the way this was constructed, is we have these, these lintels. In a normal pillbox, these would often um, be cast. This would this would be part of the part of the wall and would would be cast in situ. And in actual fact, the uh, the brick would often be used as formwork. Would have come right up to the edge of the pillbox here, uh, and then this this would have been the cast in fill. Um, and judging from the way, um, not just in this one, it's more pronounced in another pillbox we'll look at. But the gap, so the the roof itself doesn't actually appear to be sitting on the walls. All that load is taken from the anti-ricochet, the central wall in the pillbox. So these may originally have been designed and intended for construction as, um, as a mushroom type of pillbox, um, which was sort of seen around Worcestershire in the west country of England uh, for airfield defence, because it gave a very good um, all-round defence. Uh, so that may have been the case here, and it has been, uh, it has been later modified. Um, yeah, so most of the loopholes are the same, but it's when we come round to the entrance that we actually see the not only is the blast wall constructed from this local stone, but we also have the whole lower portion of the pillbox up to the grass bank was also constructed in that manner, uh, not using brick, but um, I would imagine was infilled with, um, with concrete, presumably with some reinforcements. Um, you know, and there, there are just some features which suggest there may have been a number of, of phases of construction here. So we have, we have the local stone, we then have this concrete, um, concrete block here. Whether that was to leave the loopholes open, um, or whether that was just to help with load bearing 
uh, from the roof, if that was the intent. Uh, you may hear, uh, I'm out with John today, we've got the, the DJI Mini up here getting some aerial footage. So let's pop inside and see, um, see what we can learn. So the peculiarity continues with this um, beautiful curved uh, central wall. And if we look around the other side, um, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of see the profile of this wall, but it's not the usual um, Y-shaped anti-ricochet wall that we would usually see. Um, harsh shapes are quite useful um, in these walls. And really their, their intention was um, if rounds were to come through one of the loopholes, um, they then couldn't pass straight through the pillbox out to the other side. Um, so the occupants on the other side uh, would have been relatively safe. Yeah, and you know, and looking at this entrance, we can really see the mishmash of construction methods. So we have the um, sort of the, the local stone lower part of the wall. We then have one of these um, concrete beams here. We've got um, what I imagine is is local clay brick here, um, concrete, and then we have these these precast um, lintels of which there would be ten around this this ten sided pillbox. Um, just above the lintel itself, and the the second pillbox also has it is this black and white checker pattern um, or stripe pattern above the door. Um, presumably that that was maybe to stop people hitting their heads, whether it was contemporary or not. Um, I, could, I haven't been able to to establish. So if we if we do come round the pillbox, we can see. So here's the, the other edge of this anti ricochet wall, um, and then we come into this um, this chamber, which was which was rear facing. And I'm calling rear because it looks into this into the centre of the radar station, as opposed to looking out towards um, possible approaches. Um, so yeah, you know, let's I was mentioned about the roof and this slab. So if we look at the roof uh, here, we see that it has been um, it has it has been bonded really to this to this central wall. But if we then head over to the the external side of the wall, so there's some some uh, black bitumen here, which has been used as a bit of a damp proof course uh, all the way around where this wall joins. Um, but the wall itself isn't actually isn't actually bonded to um, to that concrete. So whether this was, um, as I was mentioning, designed to sort of to be a, a, a mushroom, uh, which has then been later modified. Um, there are some unusual little cubby holes here. I'm not sure at this stage what what they would have been for. Um, and when we come up here to this part of concrete so there are some sort of rusty protrusions here and, well, and, the, and these could have been steel ties holding some wooden formwork in place as this part of the wall was cast whereas the rest was encased in um, in brick as to why they would have done that i'm not sure but this this certainly is a is a is a bit of a mishmash and suggests to me that there were different possibly different phases of construction um, in this defence, looking up at the roof, so here we can we can we can actually see some light passing through from where the roof slab is resting, um, or not resting so much um, on the actual wall structure itself. We can see some spalling as the concrete, um, as the the steel reinforcing inside the concrete uh, starts to corrode. It expands, just like here, and then the concrete on the surface spalls and um, and is sort of blown away. Um, because of that. And another, if I turn you upside down, look at this beautiful woodwork. So we can see the see the planing marks of where the planks that were used. So this isn't wood, this is an impression in the concrete. So this is the impression of the wood formwork that was used um, when this when the ceiling piece was cast. Um, and because this is, you know, if we if we go right back to the joints here, because this is all very neat, it suggests that wooden formwork is in place um, as it was cast, it was then allowed to set, and then this wall was built up into it. And that may be because of this this, or it may um, that theory may be backed up because of the uh, the repointing going on in some of these bricks. 
but certainly a, a really rather rather spacious uh, pillbox uh, less so when you have uh, multiple automatic weapons in here um, and this uh, this is your castle as you um, as you defend um, the enemy um, so we'll have a we'll have a wander out and we'll have a look at the second example which um, which surprisingly is different again and so I will join you back when we get to the second example <laughs> We have just come from the southmost pillbox and we're making our way um, to what really is the the middle of the, the third of the trio uh, protecting this hill. So from the outside there are a number of differences we can spot already. So first of all there is some earth on the roof and that would have formed part of the original camouflage scheme. Um, so not only does earth on the roof um, add a little bit of extra strength from uh, shrapnel or projectiles hitting the roof, but from the air and aerial photographs it would have it would have really enhanced the camouflage scheme. Uh, and we can tell this may be um, original or during construction. So there are bits of brick. So there are, there are these sort of brick inclusions. Uh, there's a little bit of cement we have here as well as the natural uh, shale uh, stone we have. So yeah, down on the other side. So it's always worth um, when nature has done the job and there, there is erosion at sites like this. So just having a look because um, it'll give us a little bit more context um, to what we're looking at. So here this is a different design again. So we have, we don't have any of that uh, external blast wall that we had. Um, the other one was, was pretty much a regular 10-sided pillbox, but here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. So we have a nine-sided pillbox. Uh, there doesn't seem to be, if I'm honest, any reason for this. Uh, the terrain isn't particularly difficult. Um, that would have negated uh, inclusion of that extra 10th extra side. Um, that's yes it's one of one of the contemporary mysteries uh, if we have a look at the rear of the pillbox and see them again i'm calling this the rear because this faces away from the perceived threat which would be um potentially as you can see down from the uh, the harbor and the bays um down here uh, and we have yet yeah, what i wanted to show you was this uh, this single loophole which in my in the previous video in this series um, I said was sometimes referred to a pistol loop. So this is just a, a rear loophole, uh, more likely for a uh, for a rifle rather than a pistol, um, just for a little bit of rear, rear protection of the of the pillbox itself. And now look at the look at this gap. So whether the walls have sunk um, and the ricochet wall in the center of the pillbox has uh, has held the roof up or whether this is this was initially by design but yeah the roof is is detached from the walls itself which really makes these um these concrete lintels um stand out as just been um as being independent to the to the structure itself and we can even see here that these aren't these aren't terribly well um uh, bonded here so they were either cast elsewhere or it was uh, they were cast in position after the wall had set so it's generally important with pillboxes that you, um, or with any concrete pouring, that you uh, you have one continuous pour. Multiple pours like that just cause uh, cause these separation issues. Uh, so let's go inside this one, uh, and immediately we can see the the space is much tighter. Construction methods are very similar, um, if not identical, 
um, but from a design perspective it is um, it is almost entirely different so our anti-ricochet wall here is actually curved so there's a nice curve to that wall um, and it does protrude out to the side here and if we look at the entrance we can see, if we look closely, we can see a join of bricks here. So whether uh, this part of the wall was constructed later, either to support the roof um, or if the design changed. But we have this part of the anti-ricochet wall was built first um, or built at a separate stage to this one. Um, yeah, the reasons will, will be lost to time unless we can find any more clues. Coming on round into this, many of the features um, are the same. However, here, instead of having um, some brick around the edges, these were, remember in the last one, this was, um, it looked like there was some, some, there had been some wooden formwork here and these were cast in concrete. These are now brick in between the, the loopholes. Uh, and we don't have the, um, the little kind of cutouts or cubby holes, the inner, concrete in this is actually circular um, so we can see for some yeah for some reason that we have this relatively smooth circular shape uh, around the outside as I said before you know, reasonably reasonably crude uh, we still have as we did before we have our, our natural natural stonework uh, or local stonework layer um, we then have some this cast concrete uh, sort of firing bench and then we have the loophole structures as well as the lintels on top. We have the same damp proof course uh, and then we have the roof slab on top. And actually if we, yeah, I thought, I thought this might have been a, a lintel that might, might have given some indication as to what this part of the wall was. But actually this, having this wall separate uh, seems to make less sense now. And of course we have the mandatory large spiders that we often find in pillboxes. Uh, we haven't found any local uh, graffiti or contemporary graffiti around this pillbox, which is a shame. Uh, here we have more spalling, um, so it's not just as we had a we had a beam in the other pillbox doing the same. So the the steel is corroding and uh, pushing the concrete away from it. And yeah, let's look look at that. You know, look at the gap in the roof slab, and you can see the the slight crystalline structure of the uh, of the tar damp proof course that's there indicating that the slab isn't actually connected to the roof itself uh, and here we have this one this one has been this gap has been cast in uh, in concrete definitely cruder than the other one a cruder mix of uh, mix of cement for that uh, yeah a number of a number of quirks with the construction of these certainly very very local looking uh, designs. Now there are two two more places on site that I think you would quite like to see. Um, one is possibly some ammunition lockers for light anti-aircraft gun and the second is a uh, almost a, a crew shelter, an air raid shelter um, that has some defensive loopholes over there. So let's make our way around and look at this anti-aircraft position. So with our pillboxes and main technical site up on the hill, if we come just down to the lee of the hill, we find this small reinforced concrete structure. Uh, John actually found this on his wandering earlier. So we're not exactly sure what it is. Based from what we know and have seen at other anti-aircraft sites and uh, coastal artillery sites, these may well be ammunition lockers. So ammunition lockers um, possibly for a light anti-aircraft gun that would have helped uh, just defend this radar station, most likely a 40mm Bofors gun. Um, looking inside, uh, there aren't a huge number of interesting features. Uh, there are some sockets where presumably a, a, a door or shutter may have once lived and they are really very small 
uh, themselves and these may have been ready-use lockers um, if indeed they were here to support uh, the anti-aircraft gun that that may have been here and because they're facing up and they open this way it may in fact have been a uh, you know there may have been a trailer mounted light anti-aircraft gun um, sorry not even light anti-aircraft gun but a uh, trailer mounted bofors um, possibly there uh, and that's that's just that's speculation at this stage quite often with uh, with these things we don't we don't know or to be further research um, after the fact uh, before we can identify what's here but yes a, a rather interesting well built a lot of effort has gone in to constructing this particular feature uh, even if the if the purpose is is relatively unclear so we'll head back up and we'll we'll have a look at this final crew shelter uh, that's up at the main site so I'll join you there the third and now demolished pillbox on site uh, sits overlooking the site so that's the calf of man uh, the island in the distance we can see so with the roof slab on top we have one of the concrete beams that would have been uh, above the loopholes um, but the whole pillbox itself has been has been pushed over uh, we noticed this the outline this tar outline uh, now that that could have been from a later purpose uh, it may have been that there was a, a water tank on the site or it may have been that the water tank was uh, was added and constructed here uh, when the radar station was in use so our third and final pillbox now what we have noticed is around a number of the pillboxes we have these uh, concrete bases with uh, with eyelets reinforcing hoops coming out of them now we weren't immediately sure what the purpose of these was uh, one theory we have at the moment is uh, they were for spanning out the camouflage nets that would likely have have covered these thus aiding camouflage um, even more it is very uh, high up here it'll be very exposed to the weather um, so maybe the only way to to secure the camouflage nets um, was maybe using some steel wire uh, rope and tying them down here but yeah we have the the series of uh, of loops around the outside and there are no there's no evidence some some pillboxes have have hooks or protruding steel from the roof um, slabs uh, for hanging camouflage nets over but not here um, that doesn't uh, doesn't appear in these on these pillboxes and the final uh, possible def defensive structure at this site is this building here if you if you look in the distance you can just about see John asleep there um, so we have this rectangular building that looks very much like a standard area shelter there are loopholes around the outside of it and there is evidence of benches on the inside so it may have been uh, a crew shelter that was defensible a defensible building um, it's something that we see at um, other sites it may have been that earlier uh, in the war before um, the pillboxes were constructed that this was uh, this was all they had uh, for the defense of the site so relatively unremarkable uh, but in each of the rectangular faces is a small loophole uh, the walls are relatively thin the loopholes are not stepped suggesting they were early versions uh, of the loopholes but they are concrete lined so there's no certainly in, in defensive pillboxes there tends to be either the the loophole is pre-cast um, or there was a a lintel on the top just to stop to stop this from happening um, but relatively rudimentary structure uh, we can't get inside so we'll get in and have a look and as i say it's very much uh, akin to an area shelter uh, with some 
some more defensive features. So we, we immediately have the uh, the blast wall, the, the usual chicane we have uh, to prevent blast from entering. And here we have a pretty simple building. Um, we have what would have been steps up to the roof. So there's a an emergency exit as we, we often find in area shelters. We have, you can see the loopholes, one looking in towards the site, and then we have the other loopholes here. We can see evidence of um, supports where the bench would have gone, and there's a yeah, there's likely to have been a bench on either side, as we can see the, the bench supports on either side. So, a, an unusual, uh, what looks like defensible building, and views out to the, uh, to the calf of Man, uh, right at the furth furthest southern tip. Uh, you can see the, the coarseness and the crudeness of the roof slab. Same thickness as the pillboxes, uh, not, not very thick at all. Uh, this one has been finished in a, in a cement render. Um, there we can see, see the render there. Uh, and effort like that tends to only be, be, be placed into, uh, into buildings that I suppose are habited. Um, perhaps like an area shelter, or maybe it was a, um, as we have in some South Coast Air Force bases, this would have been accommodation where, where crews may have slept um, when they're off shift if, they're, if there was an air raid shelter, if there was an air raid on. Uh, so let's see if John's woken up from his sleep. Let's see if he'll give us a wave. No, he's going back to sleep again. No? Yeah, he's going back to sleep. Um, we've, we must have been at the site for a couple of hours now. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't blame him for getting, for getting bored. Um, yeah, so the only, the only final thing that I want to to try and say to explain some of these defences. Um, we often think about um, pillbox and the thickness of the walls um, and certainly by, by doing some research I'm establishing that actually um, for coastal defences you know walls less than six feet thick are often dismissed as being inadequate. But give give the uh, the context of this site. So we're on high ground right at the southern tip of the Isle of Man now, what is the threat going to be? The threat here is most likely going to be um, airdropped troops, parachute troops, um, glider troops coming in. Perhaps the heaviest thing they may have would be, um, in the early days of the war, something equivalent to, our, to, to possibly a, a six-pounder uh, field gun. Uh, so these pillboxes, really, the only thing they would have had to defend against were were rifles, were um, light, maybe up to medium, medium-sized machine guns, um, possibly some survive strafing runs uh, from aircraft, possibly to survive um, some bombing raids from from small fighter bombers. It's unlikely large bombing raids with um, 250, 500, thousand pound bombs um, would have been dropped here. And really, so that's 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 all they were for was for ground defence um, of the radar station, of which many of the buildings and bases I haven't covered them uh, in this video, but in which in which pretty much all the bases and buildings uh, still remain. So with these pillboxes sighted. One, two, three, being adequate um, for the ground defence of this of this radar station. Well, I I think they probably would have. Um, they would only have to fight off um, potentially an initial attack just to buy some time to give troops uh, garrisoned elsewhere a time to come in and and repel um, any landing. Um, for the first thing before you land any any great force of. Uh, troops is to to neutralize and remove their air defenses so this would have been a reasonably high priority but a reasonably early target in any invasion uh, and once the fight here is done um, and once the the aircraft have air superiority well then really um, your radar stations don't need to provide advance warning because you know the enemy is already here and now uh, now started to to dominate so slightly longer video than I was planning but hopefully you enjoyed this tour and walk around uh, the defences of Craigneesh 
Chainholm Low Station uh, in the south of the Isle of Man.